the Russia-Ukraine war is a subject that has been avoided by many ministers of the gospel. But what relevance is this war to Bible prophecy? Is the Russia-Ukraine war a fulfillment of Bible prophecy? What connection is the war in Ukraine to prophecies in the Bible, and to what prophecies in the Bible? The book of Daniel and Revelation spoke of church and state powers that will unite in the time of the end to promote and create war and strife and also to kill large numbers of populations in different nations who will not obey decrees set by kings or leaders aligned to a powerful church and state. The Bible does speak of wars also in the last days in Matthew 24 verses 5 to 8 the Bible states. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars, see that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines, and pestilences, and earthquakes, in diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Of what significance is the war in Ukraine with the prophecies in the Bible? In the past century we have seen many wars taking place and some are even now in progress. There is a civil war presently in Ethiopia and an ever-escalating war in progress in the Republic of Ukraine. But did the Bible, God's book of prophecy, prophesied about this war specifically? The answer to this is no. There is nowhere in the Bible that I've seen a prophecy specifically of the Russia-Ukraine war. But, did the Bible speak of wars in the last days before Christ returns? The answer to that question is yes. If we search the scriptures to gain clarity, we will find evidence of an individual that commands an unusual monopoly of power combined between church and state. But before even going into the scriptures, it is well known that the war in Ukraine received the blessing of the Patriarch of the Russian Orthodox Church. This has also caused controversy in that faith and a split in the church's denominational administration based in Ukraine and Russia, by those who are opposed to their bishop based in Russia for giving his blessing to Russian President Vladimir Putin and his soldiers, in executing the war. The invading Russian soldiers are engaging in the deliberate genocide of civilians, rape, internment camps, unlawful incarcerations of Ukrainian citizens, robbery and a blockade of agricultural exports, the and stealing of agricultural shipments from Ukraine, and also engaging in the widespread desecration of Ukrainian territory. The sacking and plundering of civilian and other non-military infrastructure have caused untold suffering for Ukrainians, yet this war continues to receive the support of the Russian Orthodox Church leadership and their bishop. Looking back into history, it is not surprising that churches, especially the Roman Catholic Church had always been complicit in wars called Crusades throughout its history, especially those that occurred between 1096 and 1291 a.d., during which murderous atrocities were carried out in the name of God. In most recent times the Rwandan genocide is one example in which the church was complicit and which some priest even participated in the mass slaughter of civilian Tutsi and Hutu tribal people, and were instrumental in helping to initiate a civil war in that country, in which close to a million citizens were killed. Recent apologies by the Pope and his predecessor John Paul II is evidence of the Church's involvement, as it is believed by some historians, that this was done with the full knowledge of the Vatican, the headquarters of the Church in Rome. The Church's complicity in World War II is another example in which the German Catholic Church and the Pope admits complicity with the Nazis. Recently, the international scandal involving Catholic priests and bishops raping and violating young children is another dark chapter in the Church's history, and its priests, many of whom were given light sentences or simply transferred around to other parishes after committing such monstrous acts. But the Church still attract the rich and affluent, because the Church has powerful Supreme Court judges and politicians among its ranks, fitting condemnation was never done by those in the high echelons of power in the Church or the courts for the violations against so many thousands of minors around the world, and especially in the United States and Canada. The discovery of mass graves of hundreds of Native American children in Canada and the United States near school grounds of Catholic-run institutions, and the admission by Catholic Church officials that church priests, nuns and school officials were involved with this genocide is a very sad reality, in the 1890s according to historians in Canada. But as is stated, this is another subject for another time for at this time. We will be focusing on the political aspect of the great kingdoms past and present and what connections that they have regarding the prophecies of Daniel and the book of Revelation. In this two-part series, 
we will first focus on Daniel chapter 2 and its significance to the present war in Ukraine, knowing fully well that the Russian Catholic Orthodoxy is involved in their blessing and complicity in this war and encouraged Putin to execute it. Similarly a church and state power that will rule by decree in the time of the end, in the United States and other countries, since the ten toes on the image of Daniel 2 represents the divided nations of Europe including the Romans but also the Byzantine Empire or the Eastern Roman Empire, a division of the Roman Empire on whose values Russia had espoused as a country. Russia has already fulfilled their part of this prophecy with the election of a dictator as its leader, who has decided to rule with the influence of their state church. The rest of the world will follow with the Roman Church as the center of its sphere of influence. The Roman Church has dominated and influenced the judiciary, the executive and legislature of the U.S. government. One thing is certain, history has proven that when the state unite with the church or the church chooses to unite with the state, the result is never good. The church will always attempt to manipulate the affairs of the state and to legislate its belief on the majority of the population. The recent decision to overturn Roe v. Wade, a law that allowed legal abortions in America for over 50 years, is one example of a decision based on religious considerations, as a majority of the Supreme Court are Catholics. This decision is believed by some theologians as a decision made on the grounds of religion. This is also an indication that many of the decisions of the United States Supreme Court will be made along religious lines in the future. The books of Daniel and Revelation in the Holy Bible, predicted a time when both state and religious power united and persecuted the children of God. In Daniel 7:25, it spoke of an antichrist power that will arise upon the earth and shall think to change times and laws. But which time is it referring to? And which law is it talking about? In the book of Revelation in chapter 13, the Bible also spoke about this great political and religious leader who will persecute and kill the people of God unless they are willing to wear his mark and the number of his name. However, we will not go into those aspects of the scriptures at this time in detail, as this is a subject of another time. God's prophet Daniel, while in captivity in ancient Babylon with his people during the reign of King of Nebuchadnezzar, dreamt and interpreted a dream that the king saw but could not recall. King Nebuchadnezzar made a request of his wise men to interpret the dream, which is a dream that he could not remember, but called on the wise men of his kingdom to recall and interpret the dream, and they could not do so. These so-called wise men were frauds, similar to some church leaders and secular leaders of our time. They deservedly initiated the king's wrath when they were unable to recall and interpret his dream. So the king ordered his military leaders to impose the death sentence on all the wise men of his kingdom. The story is told in the Bible, reading from the King James Version beginning in Daniel chapter 2. In verse 1 and 2 it stated, And in the second year of the reign of Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar dreamed dreams, wherewith his spirit was troubled, and his sleep broke from him. Then the king commanded to call the magicians, and the astrologers, and the sorcerers, and the Chaldeans, for to show the king his dreams. So they came and stood before the king. The book of Daniel in the following verses continues to tell the story of the king and his wise men, and it reads, And the king said unto them, I have dreamed a dream, and my spirit was troubled to know the dream. Then spoke the Chaldeans to the king in Sirach, O king, live forever, tell thy servants the dream, and we will show the interpretation. The king answered and said to the Chaldeans, The thing is gone from me. If ye will not make known unto me the dream, with the interpretation thereof, ye shall be cut in pieces, and your houses shall be made a dunghill. From verses 3 to 5 above, the king summoned these wise men and because of their inability to interpret his dream he imposed the death penalty on all of them and then to demolish their homes to rubble after they were killed. But Daniel, a Hebrew young man who lived in Babylon, and was brought into captivity from the overthrow of the Israelite kingdom, to which he belonged, asked the king for time to interpret his dream. The king could not remember his dream and therefore could not understand what it meant. Daniel had the same dream as the king and could interpret and recall the dream and its meaning. King Nebuchadnezzar had a dream of a great gigantic image with a head of gold, breast of silver, abdomen and thigh of brass and legs of iron and feet of iron and clay. Daniel that night went to bed and in his sleep saw the very same dream that the king had dreamt. Daniel went to sleep and God revealed the interpretation of the king's dream to him.
and Daniel went to the king's commander who was given the task to kill all the wise men of the kingdom of Babylon due to their inability to interpret the king's dream and appealed to him for time adequate time to interpret the dream and for mercy, so that the sentence of death may be averted. He asked the king's commander to spare the life of the wise men, and that they should not be killed, because God had revealed to him the interpretation of the king's dream. He told the officer he had the interpretation of the king's dream and appealed to the king for the lives of the wise men of Babylon to be spared from the penalty of death. Daniel was able to interpret the dream and told King Nebuchadnezzar that the dream he saw was of a great image that is a symbol of a timeline of great empires from the time of his, the king's empire, which was the Babylonian empire down to a succession of other kingdoms that ends at the end of time. This concludes with the coming of Jesus Christ and his father to judge the earth. Christ's coming is symbolized by a great stone falling from heaven and smiting the image at its feet causing the great image to fall and shattered in many pieces. He explained to the king in the following verses the meaning of his dream as follows from verse 31 to verse 36 of Daniel chapter 2. Among those held captive were Daniel and his three friends Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. When Daniel was brought before the king the following conversation transpired between Daniel and the king in Daniel chapter 2 verses 26 to 28. It stated, The king answered and said to Daniel, whose name was Belteshazzar, Art thou able to make known unto me the dream which I have seen, and the interpretation thereof? Daniel answered in the presence of the king, and said, The secret which the king hath demanded cannot the wise men, the astrologers, the magicians, the soothsayers, show unto the king. But there is a God in heaven that revealeth secrets, and maketh known to the king Nebuchadnezzar what shall be in the latter days. Thy dream, and the visions of thy head upon thy bed, are these. So in the preceding conversation, Daniel told King Nebuchadnezzar that it is the true and living God in heaven that had revealed the dream and its meaning to him in night visions. Daniel had the very same dream that the king had, because God was using Daniel as an instrument of his glory to reveal to the king that true wisdom comes only from he, that almighty God. Daniel also told the king that the dream that he dreamt was about a great image that had a timeline in the form of dominant metals used during the time of Daniel and the king. The image's head was made of gold, the breastplate and arms of silver, the belly and thigh of brass, the legs of iron and feet and ten toes of mixed iron and clay. All of these metals symbolized a kingdom, and Nebuchadnezzar's kingdom was the first kingdom represented by the image's head of gold. Daniel explained to the king from verses 37 to 48 the true meaning of his dream as follows. Thou, o king, sawest, and behold a great image. This great image, whose brightness was excellent, stood before thee, and the form thereof was terrible. This image's head was of fine gold, his breast and his arms of silver, his belly and his thighs of brass. His legs are made of iron, his feet part of iron and part of clay. Thou sawest till that a stone was cut out without hands, which smote the image upon his feet that were of iron and clay, and broke them to pieces. Then was the iron and the clay, the brass, the silver, and the gold broken to pieces together, and became like the chaff of the summer threshing floors, and the wind carried them away. That no place was found for them, and the stone that smote the image became a great mountain, and filled the whole earth. This is the dream, and we will tell the interpretation thereof before the king. Based on historical records, the first universal kingdom was the kingdom of Babylon that the king Nebuchadnezzar ruled, after which it was the twin kingdom of Media Persia. Then the Greeks overthrew the Media Persian Empire, and the mightiest of all these empires was the ancient Roman Empire. Daniel's and the king's dream were the same, they dreamt that all these empires would rule one after the other, but the strongest and longest ruling empire would be the Romans. 
According to history the ten main tribes that make up the Roman Empire revolted and overthrew the emperor and weakened the Roman Empire, resulting in the ten main divided European countries today symbolized by the ten toes of the image. Therefore, Daniel told the king exactly what the king had dreamt before in the dream and now Daniel the prophet of God is now interpreting the meaning of the dream to the king. After telling the king exactly what he saw in the dream, Daniel gave King Nebuchadnezzar the interpretation of the dream also. Daniel continued to explain the interpretation of the dream. He stated from verses 38 to 48 of Daniel chapter 2. And wheresoever the children of men dwelt, the beasts of the field and the fowls of the heaven hath he given into thine hand, and hath made thee ruler over them all. Thou art this head of gold. So here Daniel told the king that in the great image that he had seen in the dream, the golden section of the image is a representation of the kingdom of Babylon over which he rules, and the other metals in the image is a representation of kingdoms that would succeed him. The chapter further stated, and after thee shall arise another kingdom inferior to thee, and another third kingdom of brass, which shall bear rule over all the earth. And the fourth kingdom shall be strong as iron, for as much as iron breaketh in pieces and subdue all things, and as iron that breaketh all these, shall it break in pieces and bruise. And whereas thou sawest the feet and toes, part of potter's clay, and part of iron, the kingdom shall be divided, but there shall be in it of the strength of the iron, for as much as thou sawest the iron mixed with miry clay. And as the toes of the feet were part of iron, and part of clay, so the kingdom shall be partly strong, and partly broken. And whereas thou sawest iron mixed with miry clay, they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men, but they shall not cleave one to another, even as iron is not mixed with clay. And in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom, which shall never be destroyed. And the kingdom shall not be left to other people, but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. For as much as thou sawest that the stone was cut out of the mountain without hands, and that it break in pieces the iron, the brass, the clay, the silver, and the gold. The great God hath made known to the king what shall come to pass hereafter, and the dream is certain, and the interpretation thereof sure. Then the king Nebuchadnezzar fell upon his face, and worshipped Daniel, and commanded that they should offer an oblation and sweet odors unto him. The king answered unto Daniel, and said, Of a truth it is, that your God is a God of gods, and a Lord of kings, and a revealer of secrets, seeing thou coolest reveal this secret. Then the king made Daniel a great man, and gave him many great gifts, and made him ruler over the whole province of Babylon, and chief of the governors over all the wise men of Babylon. Then Daniel requested of the king, and he set Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego over the affairs of the province of Babylon, but Daniel sat in the gate of the king. Daniel emphasized to the king that the ten toes of the image are symbols of the ten main tribes of the Roman Empire that rebelled against the emperor and overthrew the empire. These nations such as the Anglo-Saxons of England, Wales, the Franks, who are French, Spain, Portugal, Belgium, Switzerland, parts of Germany are the main powers of Europe today and of the present European Union. The NATO military alliance is made up of a number of countries, but they are much stronger by joining NATO, a combination of European countries, including the USA. We must never forget that the two this confirms Daniel's prophecy that these kingdoms or countries will be partly strong and partly broken. Russia, which was a part of the eastern section of the Roman or Byzantine Empire, is trying to exert such power as the Tsars did and will not succeed based on Daniel's prophecy. Therefore, based on this prophecy, Russia will never succeed in total control or fully conquering Ukraine or manage to keep Ukraine under its control in a bid to expand the Russian Empire. Vladimir Putin does not see himself as just as president of Russia, but sees himself as the supreme leader similar to a modern czar, and for this reason is bound to failure. He has made it known that his desire is to restore Russia to its former glory as in the time of the Soviet Union. The Bible has been proven to be a reliable book of prophecy, so Putin will fail. Some leaders in the last century such as Adolf Hitler, Franco of Spain, Mussolini had aspired to do the same or similarly and failed. In the preceding quotations from the Holy Scriptures, it became clear that the image is a representation of three other more powerful kingdoms than the Kingdom of Babylon that would succeed the Babylonian Empire over which Nebuchadnezzar ruled. But close to the time of the end all the existing kingdoms of Europe such as the great Soviet Empire to which Russia had belonged and included 14 other republics that previously made up the Soviet Union, 
of which Ukraine had also belonged would also crumble or break up. The divisions caused in the European Union when Britain decided to leave the European community is another example of the kingdoms of the former Roman Empire being partly strong and partly broken as prophesied by Daniel God's prophet. This also made it true according to Daniel's prophecy that Russia would never be successful in fully conquering Ukraine being a former part itself of the old Eastern Roman Empire also known as the Byzantine Empire. According to Daniel's prophecy, all kingdoms that belong to these past empires in one way or another will never cleave together, as they'll be partly strong and partly broken. It was the very same with the British Empire that up to modern times had ruled vast parts of Africa, India, Pakistan, Australia, Canada and the Caribbean, had disintegrated and lost its superpower status, not just to another nation in Europe, but to the United States of America. Dot. This explains the non-progress of Russia in the Russia-Ukraine war. The dominance sought by Vladimir Putin to rebuild the great Soviet empire with himself as supreme leader will never happen according to Daniel's prophecy. In Daniel chapter 7, a very similar dream of beasts that represents these very same kingdoms. That chapter will be looked at at a later date. Daniel looked at the king and said to him, Thou art this head of gold. And Daniel also told the king that there will be another kingdom to succeed him, and that kingdom was the Medes and Persian Empire represented by the breast and arms of silver. The Medo-Persian kingdom was overthrown by Greece represented by the belly and thigh of brass, after which Greece was overthrown by the Roman Empire represented by the legs of iron, but the Roman Empire imploded by breaking up into ten different kingdoms symbolized by the ten toes of the image's feet of iron and clay. The ten toes of the image are represented by the feet of iron and clay. Daniel said that the feet of iron and clay meant that these kingdoms would not cleave one to another, which meant that these ten kingdoms that came from a divided Rome would never unite. It is a symbol that these kingdoms will be partly strong and, and partly broken. But how did Russia as a great empire become a part of this prophecy? Russia became a part of this prophecy because it became a part of the Eastern Roman Empire in an alliance with the Ottoman Turks in 1453, though long after the Roman Empire was divided in two parts in the 3rd century. The Roman Empire was divided into the Eastern Roman Empire also known as the Byzantine Empire, and the Western Roman Empire governed by the Emperor of the Roman Empire in Constantinople in modern Turkey, named after the Emperor Constantine. Kievan Rus is the very first attempt by the different tribes of Eastern Europe to establish what is now the Russian state. But Russia adopted the Byzantine religion and culture that goes back to the time of Kievan Rus. Prince Vladimir also known as Vladimir the Great, is responsible for introducing the Byzantine version of Christianity to the state of Russia, so the Russian Orthodox Church is actually the Eastern version of Catholic Christianity. This began in about the year 988 A. D. The Russian Orthodox Church is in fact Roman in origin, even though the Russian Church was subordinate to their patriarch in Constantinople, which is now modern Turkey. Therefore, the relevance of Russia as a world power in Bible prophecy is that its empire was a constituent part of the divided ancient Roman Empire, and as Russia sought to gain more power today to expand its empire, to conquer and control Ukraine. Daniel's prophecy predicted that no nation or kingdoms of the former Roman Empire will succeed in forming another great empire again after the Roman Empire disintegrated into ten separate kingdoms, and before that, when the kingdom was divided into east and west. So it could be accurately predicted, that when Russia invaded Ukraine, it would not succeed in conquering Ukraine based on Daniel's prophecy in Daniel chapter 2. No matter how Russia tries as a world power, it will not succeed in expanding the Russian Empire or to restore itself to the glory of the Soviet Empire. So far, none of the past kingdoms have succeeded to rebuild or restore themselves or their former greatness, as was foretold by Daniel the prophet, and Russia is no exception. The Russia-Ukraine war is one example that the Bible is true and God's word is reliable, as no nation within the Daniel II prophecy was able to rise again and become a great empire not even the Byzantine or Eastern Roman Empire that Russia was a part of in its later history, and became official on May 29, 1453. One thing is certain. The Roman Empire symbolized by the two legs of iron is a symbol of the Roman Empire that was split to form both Eastern Roman Empire and Western Roman Empire. The Western Roman Empire Roman Empire was dissolved in 476 AD when Emperor Romulus Augustulus was overthrown by Germanic tribes led by their leader Odoacer, 
and after that was the beginning of what was called the Holy Roman Empire which consisted of territories of mainly France, Germany and Italy which is a church-state alliance with Rome. The Eastern Roman or Byzantine Empire was overthrown on May 29, 1453, when the Ottoman Turks overthrew Constantine XVI. Russia's Byzantine past was fashioned on the values of the Eastern Orthodox religion and the Russian Orthodox Church. That is Russia's connection to the Antichrist power, and its combining of church and state even now receiving the blessings of the church to execute its war in Ukraine. This war is driven by religion, and it's the religion of the Russian Orthodox Church and its bishop combined with the political power of Vladimir Putin and his regime. Of what importance is the unification of church and state in the last days of our world's history? To answer this question we can look a bit closer at other prophecies in Bible in which the book of Revelation spoke of an antichrist power that is descended from the Roman Empire, the last empire that held universal sway. That antichrist power is symbolized in Revelation 13, who will demand that the world worship him and those who refuse will be killed. In Daniel chapter 7, Daniel wrote of four beasts that are symbols of the same world empires. But of the last beast which is a representation of the empire of Rome, it is illustrated as a beast with ten horns. After reading Daniel chapter 7 and Revelation 13, the warning is given of the very same power who will speak words of blasphemy and wear out the saints of God and demand to be worshipped. So this world power is a church power combined with the state, since worship is required, and especially since this ruler is blaspheming the name of God and declaring that he is God. But even though Putin's Russia has combined itself with the power of the Orthodox religion, it has become an antichrist power since it represents one branch of the former Roman Empire, but not the premier antichrist power. The other branch of the antichrist power is referring to that branch in Rome. It is believed by theologians who study prophecy meticulously, that there is strong evidence that the Pope and Western powers including the United States is now seeking an alliance with the Vatican in a similar manner as the Russian Orthodox Church have made an alliance with Vladimir Putin. Though not for the purpose of declaring war on other nations, the alliance with the Vatican and that of Putin with the Russian Orthodox Church, are descended from both divisions that symbolize the two legs of Daniel's image, which are these two former divisions of the Roman Empire. This alliance is for climate change and worship in one unified religion. But since the Church is seeking an alliance with the state, this could be a revival of the old Holy Roman Empire, in which the Church dictates how all citizens should worship, the day they should worship, how they should worship and how they should live. The Church will be able to allow its doctrines and religion to be legislated by the state, and every king of the kingdoms related to the Holy Roman Empire, could not rule without the approval of the Pope of Rome. The Pope is now the head of an ecumenical movement and is seeking to unite all world religions under the umbrella of climate change. He's met with the head of all major religions in the world including those of the evangelical movement in the USA, since he became Pope on March, 13, 2013, on the resignation of Pope Benedict. Many major evangelical religions in the United States have gone to Rome to pledge allegiance to the Pope. But how significant is this in prophecy? This is one of many questions that will be answered as we take a closer look at the prophecies of Daniel and Revelation. It is evident that successive popes have sought to influence the United States government and to be influential in the decision-making process of government. But that is quite a reality now, since the executive, legislature and Supreme Court are dominated by Catholics. The Catholic Church, which was the state religion of both the Roman Empire and Holy Roman Empire, appears to be moving towards the establishment of a one-world religion. But this is a topic on which we will elaborate in our next presentation. What is clear, based on prophecy in our holy scriptures, is that Russia will not be able to conquer and rule Ukraine directly or indirectly whether by annexing the entire Ukraine or establishing a puppet ruler in in that country. This video is a production of A Sure Word of Prophecy by Glendon McFarlane Thank you for watching and God bless you. Please have a wonderful day.